Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a very simple job. It's a 2004 Toyota 4Runner and the, uh, the, what happened with this one here is the vehicle was parked and uh, the, the battery went dead overnight. They had to have a jump start and the following day uh, it was dead again. Uh, now I do know some history on this vehicle already because I did recommend a, a couple of months ago that they replace the battery uh, But they didn't do it. So today is here to have the battery uh, Tested to make sure it's no good and uh, then to go ahead and replace it now the, now the reason I knew that this battery was no good a couple of months ago is when it came in to have an oil change and You start the vehicle up as you try to start it. You can hear that it's a slower crank than normal You'll hear it start to crank like burp, 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 and then fire up and I knew at that point that, that the battery was no good. But she had no money and, and couldn't do it, so it's back today to, to have the, uh, the charging system tested to make sure it's okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and replace the battery. Now I will show you how to use a piece of neck or memory saver. We're gonna use a, a jump start box and we're gonna connect up a cable into the, to the, uh, to the uh, accessory port or the, the cigarette lighter, whatever it has on the vehicle and that way we can save the memory and we're not going to lose all of the presets that are on the radio or any kind of a GPS or anything like that that they have in the vehicle. So, all right, let's bring you up there. I'm going to show you what it looks like. We're going to test the battery first and then we're going to go ahead and replace it. Okay, now the reason I knew a couple of months ago this battery was no good is like I said, it was, when we tried to start it, you could actually hear it cranking a little bit slow. Uh, another dead giveaway is whenever you look at a battery and you see acid, that has gotten in here and has started to eat up everything is usually a pretty good indication that the battery is no good either. Um, but you do have to test it to make sure. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just connect up to the, uh, to the battery. Now there's different types of, of systems you can use. This one is my handheld unit. I like using this one versus my snap-on because it is, it's, it's a real quick test and it's, and it's very, very accurate. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to find out what the CCA is, the cold cranking amps. And uh, this one is 585. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a test like this now. We're going to do in-vehicle test, in-vehicle test, test using CCA. Yes, we're going to do that. And like I said, it was 580, so we're going to bring it down to 580. And then we're going to test it. And right off the bat, it tells you to replace the battery. 12.37 volts, 260 CCA. And it tells you right away, replace the battery. But we are going to do a, an alternator test just to confirm that the alternator is okay. So now we're going to start the vehicle up. And I'm going to leave this here. So uh, I don't know if you can see that, but we'll see. Testing the diode ripple. Now we have to turn the loads on, which would be the headlights or the wipers. Okay, we have to rev the engine again for five seconds. Now we'll see what it says. Analyzing data. Charging system is normal. 14.06, 14.03. 
and the diode ripple is normal, the charging system is normal. Let me shut the car off. Okay, so here you can see that everything is normal. Okay, it's in the normal range. So we know that everything is okay. The alternator is charging properly. All right. All right so now I'm going to show you how to go about replacing the battery. Now you can see there's a lot of acid on here, so we're going to use some penetrating oil. Try to get through this a little bit. We're probably not even going to take this one off because looking at the condition of that, it doesn't look like it's going to come off. And if it does come off, it's definitely not going back on. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do before we do anything is we're going to disconnect. Let's get some height up here so you can see what's going on. Okay, that will do it. Okay, so like I said, we're not going to disconnect this because that's too badly corroded. We're going to loosen this one up instead. So we just disconnect this one right now, like this. We're going to take that little bracket out just like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just going to take this out just like this. We are going to take this over to the bench and we're going to clean this up. We're going to neutralize that acid. You know what? I'm going to show you how to neutralize this before I, uh, before I finish this job up. Before we go any further and we do anything else with this battery, we're going to go inside the vehicle. We're going to take our jump start box like this. We're going to connect it in the vehicle. We're going to take this end and plug it into here. And then this end, we're going to plug it into the cigarette lighter or the accessory port. And then we'll turn the key to the on position and that will save the memory on we'll the radio. Plug into the accessory port inside. You know what? Let me bring you in now and show you what I mean. All right, we got our battery box plugged in here. And we have our, our jumper in here. So that way it actually is, um, it's um, still back feeding power into it. And we turned our key to the on position. Okay, so, so with like I said, it'll save the memory. So we're going to go back outside now. We have it all connected up just the way it's supposed to in here and here. And now we'll continue under the hood and we'll get that done. Okay. Now, we have, um, we, we always want to take off the negative battery terminal first. The reason you want to take the negative off first is because if you're taking off the positive like this and this wrench was to accidentally touch something made of metal, it would actually short out and cause a problem. So by disconnecting the negative cable first, that makes everything safe and you're not going to have a problem. You still do need to be safe. You, have, you still need to be careful with it because you are back feeding power through the, uh, the, uh, the accessory port inside the car. We're going to take this and we're just going to bend this back out of the way like that. And we're going to take this one off here. That. We're going to take this, I'm going to take it off just like this, and now we'll take the battery out of the car. I can tell this battery was definitely no good because it's all wet down in the battery box as well. Okay, and now we'll put our replacement battery back in. you put the battery in correctly, negative and positive, okay? Negative, as you know, is the minus mark. Positive is the, uh, is the positive mark. Okay, hold that thought. We'll come right back. Okay, now before we put that back on, we are going to clean off the ends just to make sure that there's no oxidation or any kind of corrosion in there.
All right, that we don't have to clean, but it's, it is clean because it's brand new, of course. Now we're going to reconnect our positive first. And then we'll tighten it down. And we'll reconnect our negative. Okay, now you don't want to over tighten these and break them, okay? Now they sell a stuff that's called battery protector. It keeps the, uh, the battery from getting corroded. I always put a little bit on there just to protect it. There's all different kinds you can buy. This one is actually made by 3M, or Permatex, I think, actually, come to think of it. All right, now this cable connector goes up. Uh, the protector goes over the top like this. And now we're going to reconnect our uh, battery hold down. But first, we're gonna sh I'm going to show you how to neutralize it. Let me just show you something inside the vehicle now. Okay, now, if you've done your job correctly, you'll notice that it still has the time, 832, and everything is still set the way it was before. All right, so now um, let's fire it up, make sure it's okay. All right. Okay, let me take you over there, and I'm going to show you how to uh, neutralize that ox oxidation. Okay, the way we neutralize that oxidation is you come over here and you take just a baking soda, and then warm water, and you just put some baking soda in here like this. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. Mix it up a little bit. And then we're just going to take this. We're going to take this apart, of course, here, so we don't make too much of a mess. And then we just stick this in here like that. I don't know if you can see that, but you see how that thing is bubbling like mad? It's actually neutralizing all of that um, oxidation that's on there. So we're just going to let it neutralize for a little bit. And Takes a lot of the oxidation right off of it. And it neutralizes everything that's on there so that the acid won't go any further. Okay. Right now, this one here, we're just going to let this sit for a little bit. And uh, we're going to let that sit in there and we're going to turn it over. We're going to do this side over here and then we're going to rinse it off under the water and we'll come right back. And you can see how that thing is bubbling. Look at that. It looks like uh, it looks like it's regular acid just eating it up. So we're not going to get everything off. We're going to get the good majority of it off. All right. So we're going to take this over to the uh, to the sink now, and we'll just clean it off with some regular water. But you can see it takes off almost everything. Now this one here is already rather through practically but it does take off the majority of it. We're going to rinse it off under the sink or underneath the water and then we'll come back. But you can see what it does. It just eats up all of that oxidation and gets rid of all that crap. So, uh, all right, let's put it back together. Okay, and we just put our hole down back in here. We're going to hook the front one on like that. And now we'll connect that back one up. Snug it down. See if this one turns. I doubt it. Oh yeah, look at that. 
turn. So now we're going to put a little bit of penetrating oil on there too. And that's it. All right, batteries in. And nice okay, and so tight. Okay, so our batteries in. We saved our memory on the radio. We, we saved our memory on the TPS. And we, we also neutralized all of that acid on there. We put battery protector on the cables to keep anything from corroding up in the future. And that's it. We're all done. Before you change the battery, check your alternator. Make sure you don't have a problem with the alternator. Uh, this, in this case, I knew this battery was no good because, like I said, months ago it was in. But if you, uh, if you have a battery that is a fairly new battery and it continually goes dead, make sure you do a parasitic drain on it just to make sure that there's nothing draining it down. Maybe an interior light is left on, maybe a, uh, a brake light is staying on. That's a possibility. So make sure you, uh, you check it thoroughly before you go ahead and replace the battery. All right, that's it. If anybody has any questions, you want to talk to me about anything, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.